How to kill a buck in October with spring scouting. We're talking with Byron Horton about a variety of impactful scouting tactics for right now. And also we have a great deal going on for the month of April. Check out the description below and learn all the details. Hope you guys enjoyed this clip. Let's go. Do you think by scouting so much, you were able to almost cross off areas? So in that instance, let's say you walk an area and you're like, well, I don't think this is, this is not going to be it. So I'm not even going to bother with it in the fall. I think there's almost some process by elimination there. Yeah. Um, you're, you're correct there. Like sometimes I like, guess like that's not even worth it because of uh, maybe the habitat to me doesn't look very good in that area. Or I see a lot of uh, pressure from X, Y, or Z. Now I do re-scout areas um, still a lot. And, and something like I'm trying to, to improve on is something that, that Heath Cisco talks about is wind mapping, wind scouting. Like if you look at my pins from the past several off seasons, right? Like I would say the first three to four years of that is just pins, like scrape here, good ambush point, bedding area, oak flat, like they're all those pins, but like I didn't have extra accessy type notes or secondary level information on, on that map. And so now I'll be in that area and I'll just take a note. Okay. Winds out of the North today. It's blowing true. Or, you know, I've been on this hillside once during season, two times in the off season, it seems to blow south two out of those three. So I'm adding like just more high level information sometimes at this point that I think is is helpful. And when you find an area too, do you start to mentally break that down while you're there? Like, okay, how do I get in here? What time of year do I think this place would be good? And and really break it down when you're, when you're standing there. Because I'm guilty of this. I put some notes in my... Uh, on my phone and then I come back and I'm like looking at it on the map on my computer. I'm like, I would have been more efficient if I went through that mental process when I was standing right there. Do you do that? Yeah. Like, so, so sometimes like this, this year, like I was scouting a little bit with an evening October ambush point in my uh, last season. I didn't hunt many October evenings at all. Um, just due to, you know, having a, a, a baby at home and the wife said, Hey, like if you're here in the evenings, it's just easier to get the kids down for bed. So I, I, I didn't, you know, so this year knowing I've probably got a little more October evenings, I was, I was really kind of focusing on that first, even just if it was two, three Oak trees closer to bedding. I'm not necessarily like the best like bed hunter. I'm not, the the Jake Bush ish, uh, oh. even bow hunting fiend. Like I, I find some bedding areas and hunt some doe bedding, but like I'm not like dude. He's gonna stand up at 80 yards. I've killed a few bucks off their beds, but not like I I do not feel super confident. That's my game of choice. Mm -hmm. Now I'm super guilty, like you described there. Is okay, you're walking, you, you, maybe you're walking a few farms or a couple miles, and it's like this is a good hunting point. Boom, I'm gonna mark it on my map, and you're like you forget what, what, you know, you, and you didn't mark the, the best access. You just found, oh, dude, here's a killer crossing. There's a bedding area right there. Like during the rut, this would be fire, but you, you didn't even mark how to get in there. Yeah. And so pick, I'm guilty of the tree too. Yeah. So, so I'm super guilty of that. Uh, as far as like finding a, a, a spot that I want to hunt or a point of interest, but I didn't even think how I would get there. What, and what the wind's doing some of the times, um, maybe the best access route, even a parking spot to, to hunt that spot. Like I'm super guilty of that at, at, at times. Mm -hmm. You've had some success in late October too. Were those in relation to postseason scouting or, or preseason scouting, let's say in the spring, that were a plan really came together or was it more impromptu throughout the year? The I'm, I'm So I killed a farm country buck, I think four years ago and I off season scouted that area. I, I called it the buck nest, uh, uh, you know, some similar to the, the THP videos. Mm -hmm. And, uh, actually I hung a trail cam in January that year and just got a decent amount of two and a half year old bucks and, and a, and a stud too in there. And I was like, okay, well this, this is looking good. So the next season I went in there. So I had some pre-marked pins in this buck nest. I was scouting my way in. I kicked up a deer, some, some shit, and then like started getting some rubs. And, and then, and I got to a point and there was three trees just shredded and they were spindly, but like there was like three or four in a row. And I was like, oh, I got to stop. And sure enough, I hung and I was kind of in between two, two of my pre-marked pins. And yeah, I, I killed that buck like October 25th with like an hour to go. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And and so that was off season scouting. And I went in there that, that off season, even after killing him and that place was shredded again. Like uh, I have not, I, I I've hunted that area a few times. It just hasn't worked out or whatever. But like, I think that's a, that is a perfect example of some off season scouting meets, you know, in season decision-making some information of the bucks there that you're prior just of a, of a decent caliber and i actually i trail cam that buck as a two and a half year old oh let's call him just 90 100 inches whatever he was 